What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode 12, Picture Perfect. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead. Help your auntie out, okay? Let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, look here. I know what you're saying. Auntie, this review is late as hell. I know. It is, ain't it? You want to know why? <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest with you. You know, auntie going to give it to you straight, no chases. I didn't want to record. I didn't want to. Listen, let me tell you. When you get into this YouTube thing, it is so easy to get obsessed to the point to where you eat, sleep, breathe, think about YouTube all the time. And I was getting like that at a point in time. And I said, if I ever got like that again, I was just going to take a little hiatus, just kind of step back. Because mind you now, I work nine, sometimes 10 hours a day. Plus, I got a seven-year-old. Plus, I got a husband. You know, <laughs> I got... <laughs> My days are long, and then if I'm recording on throughout the weekday, oh my gosh, it's it's a wrap. Your auntie is tired. So I just didn't want to record. I just didn't want to record. I just need to take some time off. I mean, that's just what it is. I'm sorry. This is what it is. But I missed y'all, and you already know auntie coming to you with another banger, so it's going to be good, and you will enjoy this review. So hopefully y'all are ready for the review, because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. The episode... Picks up where it left off last dog. Is this bitch recording? Okay. It picked up where it left off last dog on time. Zelda popped up in the room on the Fizzle Pop in April. They laid up in the dog on bed. He got a whole hoodie on and some basketball shorts. He ready to go get it in three point, you know, big three with Cube and them. My, meanwhile, her panties is across the room, some dog on wear. Zell's walk in, he taking pictures, recording all this and the other. Now, I think we seen on the blog some time back, he recorded more than that. He recorded her standing in between his legs and, and all of that crap. But he telling them, like, how much you going to pay for the picture? Whoop, de whoop, yada, yada, yada. They're like, stick, please. You can put it out there. Everybody already know it. Any dog going to wait like, what's you? <laughs> Ain't been your goddamn thing. So, but he basically says, you know, I'm going to give y'all some time. I'm going to have my people contact y'all people and we gonna get it in from there he couldn't wait to get on that doggone bus and spill that dog on tea because soon as he got on there paris asked where april was he was like oh she laid up in the bed with fizz that's what she asked she laid up with fizz like you <laughs> who told you to open your mouth and say something in the first damn place i thought my people supposed to contact your doggone people you already put it but you know hey like i said we already know what's going on with that whole situation right there and you know what the thing about it is it's like, it's not even the fact that you lied about it. It's just like, and I'm not even, just like, I, once we see what happens at the end, I'm going to get to that. It's like, thank you. Thank you. That's all we was waiting on was the truth. Any doggone way. Did nobody really care about y'all relationship? We cared about the fact that you was lying and you was drawing us into a line. You was lying to my face and I just wanted to prove to you that I knew that you was lying. So I'm going to watch it and ride it out to the end just so I can say, bitch, I told you so you was lying. Like, that's the only reason why people is into it and that they care any doggone way. Like, let's, let's keep it 3,000. You know what I'm saying? But y'all, like I said, Zell's got his ass on that doggone bus. He couldn't wait to spill that doggone tea and let everybody know what the hell was going on. Child, Zell's so damn messy. So, this next scene was dumb. It was very stupid and it was very bad acting, okay? Brittany B meets up with Black China. Okay, Black China standing outside up against her car, you know, sitting up there chilling or whatever. Brittany B comes out. They kind of half-ass hug. Now, mind you, we learned from the Black China, the real Black China, is that Black China don't have no whole lot of personality. She can't hold no whole conversation. She's very blank in the face. None of that is any different on these little five minutes she had on, on the screen here. She was blank in the face. Y'all, Bonnie Blue says she looks like the bride of Chucky. Baby, when she said that, I about fell out. 
goddamn laughing. I was at work earlier when I seen that shit, and it was so damn funny. Because I, when I seen her first, I was trying to figure, who the hell she looked like? Because at first, she looked like Momo to me. Y'all know Momo who it was that was popping up in them babies' uh, YouTube channels and all of that. That's who she reminded me of was Momo. But, baby, when I watched Bonnie Blue and she said, Bride of Chucky, I goddamn fell out. Y'all, listen. Go follow Blind, uh, Bl Blondie. This Moscato, y'all. Go follow Bondi Blue. She is so doggone funny. And she's from New Orleans. So she got that New Orleans draw, baby. I love me some Bondi Blue. I watch all her doggone videos. I seen her review earlier on this. And when she called this, having a bride of Chucky, God damn it, I about passed out. Anyways, Brittany B starts telling her about the trip that she had to Vegas. Once again, like I said, Black China can't act. So she's like, I got into it with Zells. China's like, I don't know him. I got into it with Paris. I don't know it. Now, at the same time, I feel like China was, maybe she had a little couple of glasses of this Moscato too, because this Moscato can get you. It can hit you, especially if you chugging this shit. Trust me, your auntie, no. So I don't know if she had some Moscato or if she had, you know, something else that she was maybe partaking in, but she looked, she was even acting. She was even slurring like there was something. Y'all know what I'm saying. Had she been driving it a bit of DUI? Uh, driving under influence because she was under the influence of something damn show. So then she tells her, Brittany B tells China, because like I said, first Brittany B was like, I went there in Vegas, I got into it with Zell's, got into it with Paris. Then she said she got into it with Lyric because she called Lyric a fake as hell. Now, mind you, Lyric and China are friends. So China's just basically like, she kind of shut it down. She didn't want to talk about that, right? So Brittany B then tells China about how her mom has been reaching out to her, want to get in contact with her. Now, of course, we know China knows some things about a crazy ass mama because China goes through that <laughs> on a regular with Tony out. We already know that. So China is telling her maybe you need to seek out therapy, you and your mom, because maybe that can help. Now, Brittany B does say that her mom invited her to go to church and I'm glad that China did have sense enough to say that church does not heal everything. You need to go to an actual factual person with the MD, with the degree in family, whatever to get out whatever it is that you need to work out. Now don't get me wrong. Lord is my shepherd. He heard my cry. You know I'm, I'm something like a Christian. You know what I'm saying? For sure on Sundays, I'm a Christian. You know what I'm saying? But she like she can give you some doggone advice on, on what it is when it comes to crazy-ass mama. So like I said, she know you need to go some doggone therapy. Because y'all know, especially black folks, we, can, we quick to say, pray on it. Pray on it, and that's going to change the baby. Prayer's going to work for so long. You don't have to go seek out professional help on some things. Other than that, God would not have invented them. Just saying. <laughs> Tell me that ain't true. So later on, Brittany B actually, oh, child, before they leave, let me get into that. So, child, like I said, I, that's how I knew China ass was under influence because, child, when they leave, China asked Brittany, can she drive? So, Brittany gets in the damn driver's seat. Then, China, like, oh my God, she's going to scratch my rims. Wait, 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 back up, back up, back up. No, 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 no. Go forward. No, stop. Wait, wait, wait. Don't forget me. Don't forget me. She was fucked up. She was fucked up. I seen it. You want to know how I know? <laughs> One drunk to another. Your ass was messed up. I seen it. I seen it. I seen it. So later on, Brittany B goes and meets with her mama right now. Mind you, her, her mama got beef. She ain't seen her mama in like five, six years. Last time she seen her mama, she said her mama put her out, right? So when they finally do meet up, mama looked like she was crying before she got there too because mama eyes was bloodshot red. Mama was cute though. She was really, really pretty. But she looked like she has been through some damn things, but she was damn pretty. Her makeup was beautiful. So Brittany B walks in. Mama walks up. She's like, oh my God, you look so beautiful. Can I give you a hug? Brittany's like, let's just, let's just sit down real quick. You know what I'm saying? Let's just sit down real quick. Child, something's going on with my hair. It's raining outside. This Texas weather just... It ain't good for your auntie hair. It's not. But we're going to lean with it, rock with it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to lean with it, rock with it. Anyways, she sits down and talks with her mom. Because like I said, she don't want to hug her. And her mom is like, you know, so how you been doing? This, that, and the other. Now, pause for the calls. I think this was a little bit of karma for the way that Britney be going off on people and how she talks about people and how she likes to stir up a lot of drama. Baby, when I tell you her wig cap and that lace front was lifted, I mean, that sucker was leaning. It was like A1. 
<laughs> that bitch was cocked like a pistol, leaning to the side. Her wig cap, you can see it with the makeup on it. I was like, girl, don't they got production? Who was supposed to be watching the screen to catch stuff like that? The pr Michelle Obama would never. Beyonce would never. Girl, Miss Nikki, baby. Tierra Marie. They would never. Like, girl, I'm going to need you to fix. Girl, I seen that. I was like, Ch you don't feel that? You don't feel that shit? sliding back like when you sleeping good and your silk scarf slide off your doggone head. I know you felt that. I felt it for you. So anyways, y'all, I'm going in on that wig cap because when I seen it, I was like, girl, I'd have had to call cut. Hold on. I'm going to need y'all to uh, fix this sucker or something, put some hair or, or did something like I was just like, girl, fix that shit. So y'all sitting there talking to her mama. Then she starts to ask her mama, do you remember last time we talked is when you put me out? Mama like, I don't remember that. Well, of course mama don't remember that because mama's on drugs and she was an alcoholic. She was drunk. She don't remember that. Like, not saying it's not her fault, but you know, she, your mama got a disease, man. She's sick, man. Like, just, you can't be harsh on her for that. And it's not only that. Let's keep it 100. How old is Brittany? Ain't you like 30-something? Your mama put you out five years ago? What was you, mid to late 20s? Bitch, you supposed to been out. You supposed to already been on your own. What the hell is you saying? And you had to sleep in your car. Okay, I get that, but girl, you should have had a plan. That's all I'm saying. I mean, girl, you should have been out the doggone house. I'm I'm thinking you like 15, 16, something like that. But girl, you was like probably 20, 30 something years old. Girl, you don't dismiss me with that bullshit. But like I say, mama say she don't remember none of that. Then Brina gets upset. Child, mama say she's changed her life. Now she's in church. And she wants her to, you know what I'm saying, go to church with her like she asked. And that, you know, she just wants to work on things. She can't change the past, but she wants to work towards the future, this, that, and the other. Now, y'all. <laughs> I am um, not myself, but in my family, I am a testimony that yes, some people who have had drug or alcohol addictions, who have changed and who have given their life over to Christ and have stayed committed to it, yes, for some people that, that does work, but I can't say some of those individuals still have different v vices and things that hold them back from, you know, Fully committing, but then some people, I'm just learning the older I get, some people use God and use religion as a crutch to continue to do the things that you do. Like, or you, you, you claim, to, well, not even claim, like you're one way this way, you're another. I'm just getting off into a whole nother tangent. But I, what my point that I was trying to make is that I hope that her mother really has changed and has made these changes that she's not using God and not using, she's changed and, you know, she's sanctified now as a way to get her back. But she still got old habits and old things that she's still doing that she's still holding on to. Like, the, you ain't changed. It's just the time changed, but baby, you ain't changed. You know what I'm saying? But... Brittany act like she don't want to cry in front of her mama. So she tell her mama, like, look here, I got to go. She ends up giving her a hug. Child, Brittany walking down the street with her misproportioned ass. But she walking down the street like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> crying hard with not now another lick of tear coming down her face. I said, where's all this bad acting coming from? Mona, give me a job. You just handing them out to everybody. And they know none of them in love and hip hop. <laughs> Hook on to up. You know what I'm saying? Give a bitch a job. You know, y'all, Lil Fizzle Pop meets up with his sister. You know, he's in mourning right now. He lost his grandmother. Now he's back home. He's off the B2K tour. He gets to be um, with his family and kind of, you know, grieve and have some time to himself, right? So his sister, um, she was a cute little lady. But, um, you know, he's basically telling her that 
whenever he's had something coming up with his grandparents, it seemed like the last couple of years, I think he said last three years, he's lost one of them back to back. He's always been out being obligated to do other things. And so that's prevented him from being there fully and committing like he's wanted to because he had other obligations, right? Child sister ain't making it no damn better. She's like, yeah, grandma just celebrated her 90th birthday. And everybody was there except for you. Child after that fizzle, like, you know what I'm saying? I just didn't get a chance to say goodbye. You know what I'm saying? Like, when Lil Fizzle Pop broke down, oh, my God. A part of me was like, oh, Fizzle. I feel you, though, know, because I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my grandmother, too. I feel, I felt him in that moment. I felt the hell out of him in that moment. Oh, and it just hurt me to my soul. But then he's sitting there crying, and his sister just sitting up there watching him cry. She was like... Bitch, give him a shoulder. He hurt. Give him this so he can lean on it, girl. But after we're after they done talking, when it was the end of the scene, then she got up, gave him a hug. Oh, child. Then she gonna ask, you still at mama's house? Because like Monique said, he was living at his mama's house. That's when they tried to say Monique's ass was crazy. Y'all better listen to these crazy bitches out here. We be for real. We be knowing things. He said, now, April got an open door policy. And I'm sure I'll open something else policy she got going on. I done kick my damn camera and all that. No more Moscato for your auntie until I finish with this little bit right here. <laughs> but he say he got an open door policy and an open leg policy with April. So he over there with April. Child, little fizzle popping April. Mm. You know what? Let me just get they monkey ass. Um, why well, I'm going to get them out the way in just a little bit. We're going to get to that. Moving on from them now. All right, y'all. So, Yo-Yo is getting ready for her daughter Tiffany's baby shower. You know, her daughter is pregnant, about to pop. Any doggone day now. Now, Yo-Yo was there with her other daughter and her mama. Y'all, Yo-Yo's mama was my perfect kind of ratchet. <laughs> mama was hood and ratchet and classy. All her core clatchet. All at the saw. Damn, damn. Same damn dog on time. I can't even get my dog on words together. I loved her. Baby mama had an old nasty symmetrical bob with some blue, I mean, um, some blonde shit on here on the top with her little bob with an old nasty come give it to me daddy swoop in the front. She talk like this, like she been drinking Schlitz malt liquor, <laughs> smoking a car to visit in the my whole damn life. That's what she sound like, like that. So, Yo-Yo uh, is telling them that she done put over 10 grand into this baby shower and that her daughter Tiffany is being ungrateful. Like, she don't appreciate nothing she's been doing with her since she's been pregnant. She's been in her last trimester. She done had a whole damn attitude about her damn self. So, Yo-Yo, like, you know, she don't appreciate nothing. So, Yo-Yo is basically like she's bitten to them. Now, the younger daughter is like, well, she's having your first grandbaby and I think she, you know, she deserves all of that. No, the hell she don't. Now that she not being grateful for it, she kiss my ass. No, she can't. Yo, y'all, I tell her for you, you kiss my ass. No, I'm not gonna do nothing for you. You act like that. You got me messed up. Shit. And I'm putting my money into it. Mama, like, look here. We gonna get in there and do what we gotta do. And after we do what we gotta do, we gonna do what we gotta do. I was like, okay, mama, go ahead and put the law down like that. It is what it is. Y'all, so later on at the baby shower, Yo-Yo, her mama's there, her da younger daughter's there. Then her daughter Tiffany ends up showing up, right? Now, she shows up, and Yo-Yo's like, you like it? Like, you excited? No, this Tiffany's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just ready to go in. It's hot. I'm tired. I'm ready to go in. I was like, ew. Now, um, mama's out there. We done been in the third trimester. We know your back hurt, your feet hurt, <laughs> back is aching, your bra too tight, your hips is wilding to the left, to the right. Like, we know you tired, but ain't no reason for you to be disrespectful to your mama like that, especially your mama putting all that money in. You ain't put a dog on lick in. Child, you better shut the hell up and let your mama do what she got a dog on do. So, soon as she go in, yo, yo, like, look here. I'm going to go in here. We're going to do this party, even though this little half of being ungrateful. I want to knock in her damn throat. I'm not going to do it. Mama say, look here. <laughs> we going to put this thing on ice for now. And we going to come back later. We better go up in the party. We better get this shit lit because it's a baby shower because I'm going to have me a great grandbaby. That's how mama was worried about. Mama didn't want to hear no shit. They better go up in the doggone baby shower. Baby, when they went to the shower, 
I'm thinking it's gonna be like a shower, like a baby shower. Like, oh, hey, girl, oh, hey, you made it. Oh my God, girl, hey, you know, how the kids been doing? How you been doing? This? No, bitch, it was a party. At the club is what it looked like. I don't know if it was a airport bar and grill. It was a lounge. I don't know what it was, but it had a bar in there and it was playing some ratchet shit. So I was like, oh, I need a, I need to go to that baby shower. That baby shower got my name on it. I should have been at that baby shower. Baby, then it really got, now mind you, Mickey Monday is there. Ray J is there. Mr. Ray is there. Oh, uh, did I miss anybody else? I don't know. Everybody and mama there. So, baby, Apple Watch shows up fresh up off of work about the pole with a bag full of money. Family dollar bag full of doggone ones, baby. I love the hell out of some family to family dollar. I got to go tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Girl, she pulled out them ones like, look at the hair, look at the hair. I just got off of work. Baby, after that, the party got popping. She doing snow angels all in the middle of the floor, busting it open, girl, bending over, doing splits, doing her little booty scoot across the ground. Y'all know how she do her little booty scoot that she do? Now, she want to scoot her coochie on the ground. Girl, I've been in the medical field over 20 years. It's a lot of shit on that ground. Don't scoot your pussy on that ground, girl. You're going to catch something. You're going to catch something. That you ain't going to be able, girl. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, y'all, they begin to tell Yo-Yo about what happened on the bus when they going to Vegas. After that, child, I see Apple was a little intoxicated. Her damn self. Because, baby, she started going off. She was like, to hell with Paris. I'm going to whoop her ass on sight. Oh, God, I'm going to whoop her ass. Y'all, y'all, like, look here. I'm like, what is the problem? What's going on? She like, she spilled Hennessy on me. I'm like, why you got to spill Hennessy on me before I'm going to beat her ass on God? Yo, yo, like, look here, <laughs> calm down, hold on. If I wanted to go upside every female head that came after me, like, where would I be? Like, Apple, you know what? I wonder what color liquor she was drinking. Because I feel it though, on brown liquor, I'm ready to fight too. On brown liquor, bitch, I'm ready to go around that bitch and ask her what you had said. What you say, bitch? That's on that brown liquor. Now, on that clear liquor, uh, bitch, I'm the life of the party. I'm dancing. I'm bending over, busted open, girl. I'm I'm having the time of my dog on life. That's on that clear liquor. Now, on that brown liquor, bitch, anybody can get it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Any physical altercation I got into in my 20s, it was on that brown liquor. And you know why? It's because of... <laughs> I asked that bitch, now, what you had said? <laughs> Y'all, I don't need to be promoting that. I don't need to be promoting that at all. You just drink wine and stay in your damn house. That way, bitch, if you feel like you need to fight, you can fight your damn self, bitch. Mickey Monday, Slick Woods, um, Ray J, Zell's Paris, and Booby. They all meet up. To like chill and have some drinks. Odd ass. <laughs> this little funky bunch here that's the goddamn together. It was just doggone weird, right? They all meet up to talk about everything that happened in Vegas. Of course, Zell tell them that he caught them. He caught um, Fizzle Pop and April in the bed together. He shows them the um, the picture that he has. And of course, here come Booby with his big slow ass. I ass fizz straight up. Like, what was the deal? So I wouldn't be disrespecting you, make you feel any kind of way. You know what I'm saying? And he lied to me. Booby, shut up. Ray J say Pranky mad at him because he missed the baby birthday party on Sunday. He said, I went to the party on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I went to Disneyland twice on a bum toe. She mad because I miss Sunday. Now, Prinky, that is a bit much. I have to agree with Ray J on that. Why you sell? I mean, I get it. You can celebrate with just immediate family, have one big old party with everybody, but to, to make it mandatory that everybody is there for a four-day celebration, bitch, why? Mickey Monday starts on this whole shit again about how, how he's broke. He got all these bills. He, um, his money man, whoever that was, set him up with some kind of deal, left him high and dry. Now he got this high-ass house bill to pay. 
bills out the ass. Meanwhile, he's saying this in front of his rich ass girlfriend, Slick Woods. <laughs> she just sitting there like, hmm. Fenty check so amazing. <laughs> you give a fuck what you talking about, nigga. So they just basically telling him, like, look, you just got to keep on grinding. You just got to keep on doing your thing, getting out there, doing your thing. Whoop -de -whoop. He's telling them that he got a listening party coming up. He's inviting everybody to it. Cha, them and these damn listening parties. But, I mean, that's how you got to promote your shit. I ain't mad at him. You know what I'm saying? This what this. Mickey Monday, for whatever dumbass reason, decides he wants to meet up with Trisha. Now, he ends up meeting up with Trisha. Yeah, that little dingy chick. Yeah, huh? He meets up with Trisha basically to ask her what's going on with Chris, the dude that's supposed to have been paying the bills and doing all of this because he ghosted on him. Trisha just basically giving him this old con artist ass excuse, basically like, look here, you just have to get out and get it. Like, you just have to keep pushing. You have to make it happen. Like, you have to do it. You have to keep grinding. He like, bitch, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Is that you? What the hell is going on with the dude with the money? Then he tells her, he invites her to his listening party. Why are you going to invite your old bitch when you know your new bitch going to be there to the doggone listening party? Player. <laughs> that's rule number one. One and two can't never be in the same place together. I'm just saying. Not that I know anything like that. You know what I'm saying? I probably did in my 20s, but as of now, no. I don't know nothing about that. But what I'm saying is, bruh, what is you doing? Now, he tells her, like, you know, maybe me, you slick, like, you can hang out, this, that, and the other. She was like, you're really with her? He's like, yes, I love her. That is my girl. She's like, you don't love her. If I called you and said I wanted to... You would be right there. Like, you don't love her. Now, Mickey, you with a sister. I'm trying to give you a little bit of leeway. I'm trying to give you a little bit of advice. Right then and there is when you should have got your ass, got up and politely led her ass to the door. Why she even come to your house? You should have met that bitch at the Applebee's or the Buffalo Wild Wings or something. Why she got to come to your house? You could have met that bitch at the IHOP or the Whataburger or something if y'all want to sit down and chit-chat like that. Hell, chili shit is good. You could have went to chili, son. She didn't have to come to your house. But right then and there is when you should have got your ass up and you should have walked the hell up out of there because she was disrespecting your girl. But you know what I'm saying? It's either here nor there. I hope Slick got up in his ass for that, though. Y'all, this next scene was dumb as hell, too. April, Prinky, and Lyrica go axe-throwing. Really, Mona? They go axe throwing, talk about their problems. Prinky mad at Ray J. Lyrica mad at A1. And April still best friends with doggone Fizzle Pop. Lyrica called her out. She's like, bitch, stop it with this doggone friendship. Y'all ain't friends. Y'all fucking. I need to know what the D like. What the D do. April gonna have nerves say, girl, why? You wanna watch? I'll let you know when we do it. Yeah, I'll let you be there so you can watch. Girl, you already done did it. Come on now, stop with the dumb shit. Stop with the dumb shit. Just get on my nerves at this dog on point. Ray J meets up with Prinky at a photo shoot that they having, right? Now he's supposed to wear, they all supposed to be coordinated, nigga. You supposed to have on a white tee and some jeans. This fool show up in a red and black top with some black jeans. He said because he had on red Versace drawers, so he had to wear the red top to match with it. He, he reminds me of my husband in, in, in a lot of ways. Like, in that particular. Did you do that for real? Because that's what your thought first thought was to do. Or are you just doing that just to fuck with me? Like, because you, you... Really, dude? That is absolutely something my husband would do. So, I could understand Princess's frustration level with that. So, child... The reason why he was supposed to show up with all them being coordinated... Because this is supposed to be the big pregnancy reveal photo shoot that they doing... Ray J now realizes that he works too damn much because he was being petty as hell. He was like, damn, we at the photo shoot. Like, yeah, we happy. It's balloons and shit. Like, be happy. She got mad. She ends up taking off in the car that this nigga came there in, leave his ass standing on the damn curb looking like a single mama waiting for the goddamn city transit bus to come in. Child, I was like, that's the way you dip on a nigga. You take off in his damn car. Had this nigga kind of over. But she was wrong as hell for that. I'd have came back and picked him up, though. I ain't gonna lie. Lil Fizzle Pop and April meet up. They have dinner. They basically meet up to talk about how they don't understand why everybody is so concerned and invested in their relationship. Do you want to know why 
April Jones and Fizzle Pop, we are all interested in this. It's because you lied about it the whole damn time. You lied and drew everybody in. So the fact that everybody was drawn into it is what made everybody interested in it. Had you been real from the get-go, we'd all been like, bitch, thank you. Would nobody give a damn? And then that's what she gonna say in her little confessional, like, um, that she said at the beginning, like, no matter who I'm with, people gonna report on it, people gonna have something to say, and what we say, and yeah, we gonna let y'all know, like, um, in the public eye that we doing this, this, that, and the other, but behind closed doors, this is what we doing, like, yeah, I like you, you like me. Bitch, had you been honest from the get-go, would nobody have given a damn about it? But the fact that you wasn't honest about it, that's what drew people in. Other than that, now that I know it's for sure, I don't give a damn. Move it on from that. So basically, he basically formally asked her to be his girlfriend. April Jones, will you be my girl? Y'all know Fizz stay how will you be my girlfriend? She's like, yes. Oh, my God. Then they exchanged this awkward-ass kiss. I know I was not the only one that was just like. And then the faces April was making, she was like. I was like, oh, oh, no, I'm good on that. I'm good on that, bro. I'm good on that. So Paris and Zell's, <laughs> they having a girls night in. Paris is cooking. Zell's is putting some kind of table, some shit like that together. They sitting back, they kicking, they talking. Zell's is letting her know that he's trying to get his clothing line up and going. He's got this EP that he's working on. I completely forgot he was a doggone rapper. But he's got all this coming out. And because he's had to put all his money into that, he's going to be late with the rent. Parents like, nigga, what? What you mean you're going to be late with the rent? You need a roof. Otherwise, you ain't going to have nowhere to lay up while you paying other shit. You don't have to pay this shit. Then he tells her about he seen some, I don't know if it was some Instagram story or whatever with Britney B and April hanging out. Because I, I don't know if I missed the part about April telling them that Britney is messy to stay away from her. I don't know. We already knew that. So, Zells is now feeling like he needs to be petty. And now he wants to go give the pictures that he has of her and Fizzle Pop in the bed over to her old boss, Jason Lee, just to expose her. He wants to be messy now. Child, y'all, the episode basically ended from there. This episode was really not that good. It wasn't. It was really not that good for me. But I hope I delivered a good review for you guys. Y'all hear that? It's raining outside. Oh my God. It's raining and it's a little bit cold outside. This is the weather I love. I love the winter. Maybe I'm about to pop out in these tights, in these leggings and boots on these hoes with my apple pumpkin spice ginger pumpkin latte gingerbread everything venti with no whipped cream okay <laughs> hopefully y'all read um see that's why auntie don't need no more of this i hope y'all enjoyed the review please don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and auntie mo will see y'all in the next video peace out what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i holla